Today's lesson is civets, from treetops to coffee cups. Hi everybody, my name is Roger. And my name is Helen. And today we're going to continue talking about civets. Sometimes they're called civet cats, but they are not feline at all. They're more closely related to mongooses, and they kind of look like raccoons. Last time, of course, we had some questions, and we answered some of those questions. Like, what do they look like? Well, they're bigger than cats. They're lean. They've got a furred tail, and some species have stripes. We also talked about where they live, didn't we? Yep, we talked about where they live and also what they eat. So we've covered the basics around civets, and today we're going to look at some other questions and try to answer them. And the first question is, how do civets communicate? Now we know that civets are solitary animals, which means that they tend to live alone. But sometimes they have to get together, and they need to be able to communicate or talk to each other. And how do they do that? That's a question that we're going to try to answer in the first part. How do they communicate? Apart from sight and sound, civets rely heavily on scent to communicate. They have special glands that produce a musky smell, which they use to mark their territory. This musky scent was historically used to create perfumes. These days, however, most perfume companies are using a more civet-friendly artificial version of the scent. Hello. The scent of fresh flowers came in through the open window. 鲜花的香味从打开的窗户飘进来。或是, the wolf followed the scent left behind by his prey. 那只狼跟着他的猎物所留下的气味。另外把这个字字尾加上ed就变成了形容词scented, 表示有香味的。举例来说, The scented candles made our bedroom smell like vanilla. 这个香氛蜡烛让我们的卧房闻起来像香草。也可以说, the store is known for its various scented products. 这家店已贩售各式各样的香氛产品闻名。再来我们看到单字 perfume. 也可以念作 perfume. 这个字是名词指香水。举例来说, the woman's perfume lingered in the room for an hour after she was gone. 那个女人的香水味在她离开一小时后还残留在房间里。或者, Nancy sprayed perfume on her neck before going to dinner with Alan. Nancy and Alan 共进晚餐前在脖子上撒了香水。另外这个字也当作动词,表示是充满香气。例如, The smell of apples from the apple tree perfumed the room when the window was open. 窗户打开时,树上苹果的香味充满了整个房间。也可以说, The garden is perfumed with the smell of white lilies. 花园中充满了白百合的香气。Okay, let's talk about the first part now. Again, the question is, how do they communicate? How do they send information to and from each other? Well, apart from sight and sound, civets rely heavily on scent to communicate. So, of course, they probably can't speak, and uh, they might make some sounds, but uh, in any case here, they mostly rely on scent to communicate. Scent refers to something that you can smell. So, of course, if they want to send a message to somebody, they send off a certain kind of smell, and the other civet will get the idea. That's right. So, apart from sight and sound, here the phrase apart from means besides or aside from. So, you can say something like, apart from apples, I am also allergic to oranges, which means that I am allergic to both apples and oranges. So, civets 
do rely on sight and sound, but apart from these two things, civets also rely on scent. When you rely on something, it means you depend on it, you use it to accomplish something that you need to do. And as for the phrasal verb rely on, here is an example. You could say that a blind person relies on his stick or his seeing eye dog to get around. So if a person is blind and they can't see, they will need to rely on something like a walking stick or a seeing eye dog in order to get around the city. Indeed, and they have special glands that produce a musky smell which they use to mark their territory. Uh, territory, of course, refers to the area of land that they're active in, and you've seen dogs do this quite often. Of course, they lift their leg and pee on trees to mark their territory, and civets do the same thing with their smell. They secrete this musky smell, and that will mark their territory so that if another civet tries to come into that territory, they'll pick up the scent and they'll think, hmm, maybe I better stay out of here. I don't want any trouble because this place is pretty pretty much acclaimed by another civet. And this musky scent was historically used to create perfumes, which again are liquids that people put on their bodies to make them smell nice. And these days, however, most perfume companies are using a more civet-friendly artificial version of the scent. So, of course, I guess it probably causes harm to the animals to collect that smell from civets. So perfume companies are being nice to the civets now. It's more civet friendly. They have an artificial version of the scent. It would be something created in the laboratory. So if something's artificial, it is made in the laboratory by people. Right. So it's not natural. It doesn't occur in nature. It's made by humans. And version here means a form of something that is different from other other forms of that same thing. You can say something like, this software came up with a newer version that is a big improvement of the older version. So it's the same software, but it's just a new form of that software. Right. So it's not the natural version of the scent. It's an artificial version of the scent. And who knows, it may even smell better than the real thing. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson. And now we're coming up to the big question that everybody wants to know about. What the heck is civet coffee? Let's find out right now. What is civet coffee? Civet coffee, which is harvested from the fecal matter of civets, is among the most expensive types of coffee in the world. The Asian palm civets diet includes coffee cherries, and although the civet is unable to fully digest the seeds, its digestive system changes the structure of proteins in the seeds as they pass through. The process gives the resulting coffee a smoother flavor. These coffee beans used to be collected in the wild, but today they mostly come from farms where civets are kept in confined cages. Let's take a walk to help us digest dinner. 我们去散个步,帮助晚餐消化吧。或是, it took us some time to digest all the information. 要理解所有的资讯花了我们一些时间。另外补充这个字的名词, digestion, D-I-G-E-S-T-I-O-N, digestion, 意思是消化能力或是消化系统。我们可以说, Lloyd often suffers from digestion problems. Lloyd经常受消化问题所苦。也可以说, to aid with digestion, Sally likes to drink tea after her meal. Sally喜欢在饭后喝茶来帮助消化。So now we're going to answer the question, what is civet coffee, which is something that was suggested in the title of the lesson, civets from treetops to coffee cups. So now we're going to get to the main point here. Now, civet coffee, which is harvested from the 
fecal matter of civets is among the most expensive types of coffee in the world. So civet coffee is a type of coffee that is produced from the fecal matter of civets, and fecal matter is just a polite way of saying poop. So this type of coffee is harvested or collected from the poop of civets. Right, the dung, the fecal matter, the feces, etc., etc. Of course, they have to follow the civets around to collect the poop, to collect the feces, and then, of course, you get the coffee from that stuff. Who the heck would want to drink coffee that comes from the feces of an animal? But I guess there are some people out there who like that because this is among the most expensive type of coffee in the world. And the Asian palm civets diet includes coffee cherries. And although the civet is unable to fully digest the seeds, its digestive system changes the structure of proteins in the seeds as they pass through. The process gives the resulting coffee a smoother flavor. So there is the scientific explanation as to why civet coffee is so tasty. Of course, we've got an Asian palm civet, and their diet includes coffee cherries. Now, as you know, coffee grows on bushes. And of course, they are kind of like little fruit, and we're calling them coffee cherries here. And of course, the Asian palm civet will eat those coffee cherries. Okay. Now here it goes on to say, although the civet is unable to fully digest the seeds, its digestive system changes the structure of proteins in the seeds as they pass through. So yes, they cannot fully digest those seeds. This does happen sometimes with our diet. We eat certain kinds of food, but we don't fully digest those kinds of foods, and they come out when we go to the bathroom, of course. And that's what happens with civets here. They eat the coffee cherries, but they can't really fully. Digest them. To digest means the body converts food into something that the body can use using the digestive system, which would be the stomach and the intestines, etc., etc. And so, therefore, the civet is unable to fully digest the seeds. They only partially digest the seeds, but there's some kind of chemical change. Right. So when you digest, you're breaking down the food, and since the cherries are quite hard, the civet stomach isn't able to break down the seeds completely. However, as the seeds pass through the digestive system, it undergoes some kind of change. The change happens in the structure of proteins in the seeds. So protein is a substance in food. It could be any kind of food, like meat, eggs, and milk. You won't find a lot of protein in Vegetables and fruits, but protein is something that people need in order to stay healthy and to grow. So this protein, the structure of the protein, changes in the digestive system of civets as the civets are trying to pass these seeds through its body, and the result is that. When the seeds pass out of the civet's body, the coffee that comes from these seeds have a smoother flavor because it had been digested or had gone through the civet's body. Indeed, so you get these coffee beans later on that have been chemically changed by the digestive system of civets. And when you dry them and grind them down and make them into coffee, it supposedly produces a coffee that has a smooth flavor. And these coffee beans used to be collected in the wild, but today they mostly come from farms where civets are kept in confined cages. That seems to be more productive there. Of course, they used to collect the beans in the wild. People would go out looking for civet droppings, and they would collect them and find the coffee beans in them. Them. They would wash them, of course, and then process them and make them into coffee. But nowadays, we've got civet coffee farms. The civets are kept there, and they're kept in confined cages. If something is confined, that means it's very small in space, and they can't really move around at all. So I suppose you're contributing to the suffering of civets if you drink civet coffee. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like another way for humans to be unkind to animals for their own taste and their own pleasure. Indeed. So that brings us to the end of the second paragraph, and that does answer the question about civet coffee. What is civet coffee? And now we're going to wrap things up with the final paragraph. Let's listen to it first. 
Certain species of civets are already on the endangered species list. Others are threatened by the illegal trade of wildlife. If we are to ensure the continuing survival of this interesting creature, we should leave civets alone to live their lives peacefully in the treetops. My parents saw a huge amount of wildlife when they visited Africa. 或是, what kind of wildlife will we see when we go camping next weekend? 我们下周去露营的时候会看到什么野生物种呢? 另外补充这个字的相关形容词, wild, W-I-L-D, wild, 意思是野生的, 像是, Steve lives in the countryside, so he sees wild animals very often. Steve 住在乡下, 所以他常常看到野生动物, 或者, you must always be careful when you're near wild animals. 接近野生动物时,你务必要小心. So we've learned a, a bit about the civet and how it's a very interesting animal. It looks like where they live, what they eat, and also the things that they do to contribute to benefit our lives through the coffee that they produce. However, there is a downside to all of this. Certain species of civets are already on the endangered species list. So some species of civets are endangered, which means that they are in danger of disappearing. They are in danger of no longer existing in the future, which means that perhaps one day in the future, this world will have no civets living on it anymore. Exactly. So we're describing certain species of civets as being on the endangered species list. So of course, different animals have different conservation status. In this particular case, certain species are endangered, which means they're getting close to becoming extinct in the wild or even extinct totally. And so in this particular case, civets are endangered and they may not be around for a long time. And others, again, are threatened by the illegal trade of wildlife. That does happen, of course. Animals are bought and sold on the market for various reasons to sell to rich people around the world world because they want body parts from animals for specific reasons. And so in this particular case, some species of civet are threatened because of the illegal trade of wildlife. Right. So when you are threatened, it means that you feel that your life might be in danger or that something bad might happen to you. For instance, if somebody on the MRT comes over and threatens me and says, either you give me your money or I will hurt you, then that's a threat. I will feel threatened and I will probably give that person my money. Of course, that would never happen in Taiwan, but that could happen in some other countries. Now, if we are to ensure the continuing survival of this interesting creature, we should leave civets alone to live their lives peacefully in the treetops. So here the writer is sort of hinting to us that we should probably avoid drinking civet coffee and let them alone, let them live their lives in the trees in Asia and Africa. That sounds okay to me, but of course, as you know, sometimes the human temptation to show off your wealth is just too hard to resist. So of course, there are always going to be people out there who are going to want to drink civet coffee just to show off. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our discussion about civets for today and for the previous lesson. Of course, we had a lot of questions, and we've tried to answer those questions as best we could. There are probably many other questions that we can ask about civets, but we don't have time today. What we do have time for right now is to listen to our dear Chinese teacher. Kwitonshadahao 
we should 点点点去表达说，如果我们要确保怎么样，我们应该怎么样。好，那这边就是要介绍 be 动词加上 to 再加原形动词，这样的句型可以表达将要怎么样，或者是计划做某事。那把它用在 if 条件句当中，就表示如果要怎么样，就需要怎么样。例如 ，Ian needs to work harder if he is to become a professional soccer player. 如果 Ian 想要成为职业足球员，就必须更努力喽。好，那补充一下，如果是用 if 主词。Were 再加 to 加原形动词，这个用法则是表达未来可能发生的假设情况，去表达假如怎么样，万一怎么样。那通常是用来表达未来发生的可能性极低，或者是极不可能发生的情况。好，我们看一下它的句型，就是 if 主词加上 were to 再加原形动词点点点，逗号主词加上 could would might 或者是 should 再加原形动词。好，举例来说 ，If they were to have children, they would need to move to a bigger house. 假如他们将来有小孩，就得搬进更大的房子住了。那也许他们可能一直都没有这种生小孩的计划。那我们用这样的句型去做未来的假设。再看一个例句 ，If you were to travel back in time and do one thing, what would it be? 假如你要回到过去做一件事，那会是什么事呢？接着我们看到同一句课文里面，它用到 leave civet alone 去表达不打扰社猫。那这边用到 leave 名词 alone 就是表达不打扰、不干涉点点点。我们在口语中常说 leave me alone， 就是说别打扰我，让我一个人静一静。好，那也补充一下 ，leave somebody alone 也可以表达出放过、饶过某人的意思。例如 ，the paparazzi just won't leave them alone. 狗仔队啊，就是不肯放过他们。好，那顺便补充两个跟动词 leave 相关的片语哦。第一个是 leave somebody in the dust。这个 dust 它有尘土、灰尘的意思。那这个片语字面意思是。就好像是把某人留在尘土中，那其实就很好理解。当车子疾驶而过啊，或者是快马奔驰而过的时候，是不是会扬起尘土，把那种被甩在后头的人呢，就好像摆在尘土之中，让他们望尘莫及？而这个片语呢，就是表达使人望尘莫及的意思。例如 ，Hank left all the other runners in the dust. During the final lap, 在跑最后一圈的时候啊 ，Hank 把其他所有跑者都甩在后头，他们望尘莫及。好，那第二个补充的是 leave one to one's own devices。名词 device 在这里是指行程或者是设计的意思。那这个用语呢，就表示让某人自行其变，不干涉他们的计划，让他有那种充分自主权，可以自由行动。举例来说。Parents should not leave their children to their own devices. 父母不应该放任孩子为所欲为。好，那同学们应该也知道 ，device 它有那种装置的意思，像我们用这种三 C 产品有那种装置的意思嘛。那假设父母把孩子们丢在旁边，让他们自己看那种三 C 电子产品呢？我们套在这个例句上面，就会有一种双关的语义喽。好，那以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单字吧。Scent. The dogs followed the deer's scent and barked loudly when they found it. Territory. Animals often defend their territory against other animals. Artificial. Marcus placed a number of artificial plants in his fish tank. Version. The latest version of the software is much easier to use. Digest. David can't digest dairy products, so he avoids them. Endangered. Pandas are no longer endangered, but their numbers are closely monitored. Threaten. Many small island nations are being threatened by climate change. Discussion starter starts now.
Here's our discussion starter for today. The question is, what fact did you find the most interesting about civets? Well, I didn't know that civets were kept in confined cages in order to harvest the civet coffee. And that's very, very disturbing to me. So it's going to make me think twice about ever trying civet coffee. Well, I think it's cool that civets are twice the size of household cats. I thought they were about the same size as cats. It turns out they're twice as big, so I'd really like to see one in the wild someday. They might be quite an impressive sight. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you enjoyed reading along with us. I am Roger. I'm Helen. See, see you next time. time.